We have two separate things here. One is uh, solar weather that could produce something like a Carrington uh, event and uh, uh, take down uh, the grid or something smaller than Carrington but still devastating to some part of the world or including possibly part of the United States. That is something that nature is doing and there's no way to put much of a probability on it except to look and see how often it's occurred in the past and that's where they come up with estimates like every century or so a Carrington uh, event. So that's a malignant issue, you have to worry about something very different as well, which is a malevolent issue. Namely, someone deciding to destroy our electricity grid by, let's say, North Korea, launching a, a ballistic missile uh, to carry a satellite into space, uh, have a nuclear weapon on the satellite, and detonate it uh, whenever uh, North Korea wants. That is not something one can put numbers on. Um, what were the probabilities in 1941 that Hitler would invade Russia? Who knows what the probabilities were? He had before him only one example of that having happened before in history. France didn't do too well when they tried it in the Napoleonic era. Um, it was a very unwise decision strategically. He already controlled uh, more of Europe than is now in the common market. What, uh, why did he do it? There's no way to put a probability on decisions like that. Anybody who puts himself in the shoes of a terrorist or a terrorist-like leader like Kim Jong-un and says they won't do this, they, won't, they will do that, uh, I think demonstrates his lack of knowledge of such people because it is extremely hard to predict what they're going to do. It, it, crazy doesn't mean uh, ranting and raving. One can be, as Hamlet said, mad north by northwest. Hitler was as shrewd a diplomat during the 1930s as the world has ever seen. It was all in the service of the absolutely stark raving nuts idea of his conquering all of Europe how in the world can you put a probability on something like that? Immediately, I think I'd assemble the best uh, dozen people in the country who understand uh, the grid's uh, uh, vulnerabilities and uh, the electromagnetic pulse and ask them, what would you do right away in terms of, say, protecting the uh, 350 or so large uh, extremely high voltage uh, transformers or any other steps. Uh, but whatever they could do quickly that would not make it the case that the entire grid was, was destroyed by an electromagnetic pulse uh, uh, event. And longer term, I think we have to take a look at what we can do for at least some of our electricity needs uh, with distributed generation, uh, probably using solar because it's getting cheaper all the time, and uh, how one could make it possible for a homeowner or a school to have at least some electricity, even if there were an electromagnetic pulse uh, attack. Um, not all the electricity one would want, but the combination of, uh, I think, thin film and the, uh, and the improvements in batteries could well make it possible for a home or a school or a church uh, that let people have at least some electricity, even though it wasn't as much as they'd like and it wasn't what they had before. The difference between some electricity and none is absolutely huge. The uh, Congressional Commission report, chaired um, by Dr. William Graham, uh, President Reagan's science advisor, uh, says that uh, there would be, within the first year of losing the electric grid, something on the order of two-thirds of the American population would die uh, as a result of lack of food, lack of water, uh, et cetera. Uh, at least two-thirds, and the, other, the upper range estimate is 90%. With those kinds of losses even possible, uh, 
it seems to me that the normal psychological reluctance to admit that there's a problem and, and yada yada is, um, is really very out of place. I don't know why the utilities uh, have not been very responsive. A few have been, and we should give them credit for that. Uh, but um, uh, it would seem that the risk of losing essentially the entire grid uh, by not spending a modest, very modest amount of money to improve its resilience is really a, a, a stunning situation.